Bonjour guys, hello, your girl is back. I'm so excited to come here today and share a couple of things with you. But before I get started, I have to say, it's a new year. It's new. So there's new things that need to start happening for you. But for new things to happen, the hope is that you've learned from the year before. So that's what I'm here to talk about are lessons learned in life. So keep watching. Let's get to it. Yeah. So let's start having this conversation. I am a person that believes in conversation and talking and sharing and being somewhat transparent. Now, you're not going to know all my business, okay, because we got to have a little bit of privacy here. But you're going to know some crucial things that I feel if you were a friend of mine, the things that I would share with you. If even a stranger, I've had really random conversations with strangers. And we always lead back to lessons learned. Sometimes those are the things that mold new friendships. Those are the things that bring family that kind of parted ways closer together. It's really a bonding thing when you're able to share, um, share life experiences with others. So there's no particular order per se as to how I've learned these lessons. It's just overall the things that I've learned. And I'm going to try to keep it down to a few, but one of the ones that I want to discuss I'll say is honestly without financial anything you cannot survive in this world that we live in however the way you manage your finances will truly determine how your life overall feels and the things that you're able to do I have learned whew, I have had really good income. I have downsized my income. And the biggest lesson I learned is in order to stop crying broke, you have to change the way you manage your money because this video will be forever. If you want to know what things I've really done in more detail to manage my finances, to have a better balanced lifestyle, feel free to leave a comment below. But I'll say once again, it's all about your circle. I have a really good friend of mine who was not only just my accountant, um, but also my financial um, educator. He has a website called mentorme.com. If you want to check him out, I think his information is very resourceful. So a lot of things that I've done to change my financial situation so I can stop crying broke is number one, change my cost of living. If you can't afford that luxury high rise condo or that huge, massive, expensive townhouse rental or even a purchase, don't overdo yourself. You don't want to be house poor. So what I did, I don't currently own any uh, property yet, but I am currently working on that and it's looking very promising, so I'm excited. But with reducing your cost of living, you will have to sacrifice a few desires and preferences and wants. Whatever it is, you need to really consider how you're spending your money, especially in the biggest part that takes up your expense is your cost of living. And another thing to consider, you may not like it, you may have to live with other people temporarily. Having a roommate, one, if worse, two, but it's remember, it's temporary. But in order for it to be temporary, you have to be very, very productive with that time by saving, by being financially smart. Now, I choose to live by myself. Yeah, my cost is a little bit higher by living by myself, but I also picked and chose where to live to make that cost still a little bit lower and more cost effective for me to still be productive with other goals that I want to achieve. That is one of the options I would highly recommend on a temporary basis. If you really need a car, you might have to buy pre-owned, certified, or used, but as long as it gets you to point A to point B, and if you manage that money you're saving also, it may not have to be a forever car. But it's all about picking and choosing wisely where you spend your money. I hate a person that keeps crying broke but keeps making bad financial decisions. And let me tell you, I was one of those people. And I was tired of even hearing myself constantly say, oh, I'm tight. Oh, I'm broke. Oh, mm, can't do it. Because I'm choosing to live somewhere so expensive or I'm choosing to 
you know, constantly keep going out and partying and having fun and hanging out with friends and having to spend money I shouldn't be spending. And I had to really change that. So I'm happy I did. And I'm in a really much better financial place because of that lesson. Now, this lesson here <laughs> applies to a lot of aspects of life, but mainly this is more on the dating, love, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, whatever it is. Trust your gut. People, when I tell you your gut is not just this physical part in your body, I feel like it's God's way of physically talking to you. And when I say trust your gut, it's basically if it looks messy, feels messy, sounds messy, it is messy and you're not going to come out of that situation clean. And what I mean by that is, oh my goodness, I have learned so much by what happens when I don't trust my gut, when I don't follow what my gut is saying, oh, mm -mm, don't go that way. Oh, nope, this person, mm, you may not want to let them too far into your life. Oh, you need to cut that situation off. How things just go left <laughs> when I don't trust my gut, when I'm seeing all this mess in front of me, and instead of me either deciding to say, oh, I'm going to close the door and go somewhere else that's a little bit more clean, I decide to brush it to the left, brush it a little bit to the right, and go straight through into more mess. People, <laughs> believe me when I tell you, anything in life, including individuals coming into your life, they really are the true selves of them the moment you meet them. So trust when something happens or when they say something or they do something and it doesn't really hit you in the right spot or let's say it doesn't tickle your fancy, it most likely won't continue to tickle your fancy in a positive way. I found out through having good people around me that are from the outside looking in to be my judgment callers but also really care about my well-being and They've known me for years, and I trust that they can see things that I can't really see. And sometimes they call me out on it. I learned, especially the year before, that when somebody can discern that a situation or a person or a thing is not for you, it is the most powerful gift from God that you can have. When I tell you, trust that, believe in that. I know sometimes we have to question people's intentions, but that's something that you have to work with. But at the end of the day, it's your decision. But take all factors, not just theirs, but your own personal experiences, your own decision making to decide if, yeah, you shouldn't be dealing with this thing that's happening. Out of all of my experiences, if something already is starting out a mess and it's not right, it's not going to get any better. So please save yourself the headache and the drama, even as of just literally recently, help me to catch really key signs of something that somebody is doing that I know is not going to work for me and just cut that situation out not invest too much time into it which reduces my ability of getting hurt which creates scars we don't need any more scars folks we've had enough scars that can last our great great grandchildren let's not create more scars for ourselves listen to that gut this issue you you know it's common sense it's I think a very big part of growth and maturity but sometimes we have to keep saying things to ourselves to keep us in check or to get us to fall in line when we are going in the wrong direction the biggest problem I'm noticing that we're having now and I'm not gonna fully blame it on social media or the advent of technology is that People lack communication with one another. When you have a problem with someone, please go to them directly, preferably either face-to-face -face or via an actual verbal phone call conversation. And the sooner you do it, the better it will be. Because what happens is people get so lost into their life, into their world, and their selfish thoughts and their viewpoints that they think is so right, and it may not be wrong but it may not be 100% correct, that they don't take that ego aside to save a relationship and have a conversation. Hey, you did this to me and I really did not like it. 
those are very hard moments to have. But it cannot be had over social media, over subliminal messages through other people, over text messaging because how this person may receive it depending on where their emotions are in that moment. They may not get your message the way you wanted it to truly be delivered. A lot of relationships and families and um, marriages have broken and fallen apart because we're not bringing our emotions about someone directly to that person. And I learned very big how important it is to not let things linger, how far our mind can just take stuff, how we can misconstrue, misunderstand things. But in order to also save that relationship once you actually open up and confront that individual, preferably not confrontational, not with so much anger, you can still deliver your message without having to be rude, cursing, you know, doing all of this and the pointing of the finger. Have some respect, if not for that person, but for yourself, because I know you're better than that. It's really important that you take the time to approach someone with dignity and care and be open to a conversation and be mature enough to hear them out. Listen, don't overpower the conversation and also be open to take accountability for whatever aspect in that situation you were wrong in and figure out okay well next time how should it better be handled be honest about how you probably could have handled it either way it's important to have some level of positive flexuality in the conversation so that hopefully that relationship can be saved you may need a couple of days to cool off but don't let it linger too long um, and just deal with it head-on pull the band-aid off it's gonna to have to be one of those situations because I'm telling you once you pull that band-aid off it even the little itchiness or that quick sore or that quick moment of pain it eventually goes away and you feel better but you only die once and you don't know when that's gonna happen so why live it so negatively why have so many enemies why be so mad all the time because you have all these underlying issues that are so not resolved I hope this information was very helpful to you you can go on my website able to book me for a consultation if you're going through something or you're having an issue with someone and you kind of want to get a different view as to how to address it feel free we can set that up nothing will enhance in your life if you don't learn from your mistakes if you don't also learn from other people's mistakes so maybe you don't even have to make that mistake you'll make some mistakes but it doesn't have to be that particular one so I'm gonna end the video here this way it doesn't run on forever I just kind of wanted to come and give you some some hints and tips of how to start the new year so that it can really be new for you life boy I tell you it's a hard thing that somebody can have but it's life so until next time everyone peace out